It's Josh Williams here, guys, with yet another sunny Californian bonus episode of the One Man Podcast. And today, my guest is a super funny guy. We both uh, came up around the same time. We're going to have some great stories to tell you about those those good old days. But he has performed on the uh, on Conan. He's performed on America's Got Talent, Just for Last Festival. You name it, this motherfucker is doing it. My good buddy, DJ Demers, is with me today. Thank you for doing this, buddy. We're sitting in sunny Burbank, sweating my balls off. Yeah. And it's not even, it's autumn right now. You should be here in the summer. Your balls would be long gone by now. <laughs> thanks for having me, buddy. And <laughs> thanks for making me feel like a million bucks, you know? I need to hear your soothing voice and saying all my accolades on the days that I'm filled with self-doubt. Are you filled with self-doubt today? Uh, no, today I'm feeling good. I just mean, you know, this career, it's uh, oh ups and downs no matter what. So it's good to stay positive. I feel like I'm not scared enough then because I'm like, I'm, I'm having self-doubt, but I mean, I'm doing, I'm doing three minutes begging for laughs. laughs. You're like, well, you know, I did just crush at the comedy store last night for three minutes, went in there and just made it look easy. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know what? It was really interesting for me to, to watch you because it was your first time. First time at the store. And uh, I remember my first time as well. Not that I'm like an old hand at the comedy store by any means, but I've done it a few times now. And uh, it's an interesting feeling getting up there for the first time, isn't it? It was absolutely it's great. Absolutely great. And before we go too far, and I do want to say that uh, Mike is off. So, of course, as listeners know, Mike has been a part of this trip. Mike is also here sitting with us at your place. Hello, onesies. Hello, onesies. What's up, Mike? Hey, DJ. <laughs> Welcome both of you to my humble abode. Good to have you. DJ's place, guys, I have to tell you, is fucking gorgeous. Yeah, I'm awesome. just telling you, the drive up here, like, I th let's put it this way. You had a really nice fucking uh, prelude to your place. <laughs> all right? Yeah. When we were driving, first off, you leave West Hollywood, all right? And you drive north. You drive past Mulholland Drive and, and the Hollywood sign, everything like that. Then you just, you only drive past up ton of you know studios where they make movies yeah all the main studios in burbank there yeah, yeah. all of them all of them and all of the main ones <laughs> yeah yeah i right? mean burbank is where it all goes down it's pretty cool there's a few we saw a few studios uh in hollywood and i was like oh look dude no nothing compared to what we drove past here we drove past warner brothers we drove past walt disney those iconic gates are just down the street from where yeah, we live. Yeah, there's Ellen just down the street. Her giant not visage is looking down <laughs> on the street. Visage, visage. I think it's. The I same say visage. Thing. Yeah. yeah, like you're in you're in Hollywood, so you're allowed to. Well, sorry, you apologize. You're in Los Angeles, California. That's right. Great. You're allowed to be pretentious with your words now. Visage. Her visage. Well, I never know sometimes if I'm saying it the Canadian way, or the American way, or like what's another word? Um, because I was oh I was saying it in a joke. And I was going to do a TV appearance, and I was like, do people say caveat or caveat? I say caveat. I said caveat, too, and I changed it to caveat for a TV appearance, and I regretted it. I'm like, I don't say caveat. Never change for anyone else. It wasn't for anyone else. It was my own fucking internal debate that was completely <laughs> unnecessary. Like, you can attest to the promo I tried to cut for you at the beginning of the show. How many tries did that take? That was great. I'm, all, I'm actually probably going to just take that whole thing and just put it at the end of the episode <laughs> yeah. so people can listen to you try. <laughs> So tell me, uh, this is your first time in L.A., this is your second time, right, Mike? Third time, yeah. Third time, yeah. okay. And uh, I, I remember my first time, I remember my second time, like every time you learn a little something new. Your third time, your first time, what are your main takeaways from this trip so far? I, I will die not long after moving to the city. <laughs> from There's what? too much delicious Mexican food. Mm. In yeah. and out Burger is too cheap and delicious. Dude, you want to talk about good food? Right on the corner here, okay. By my and I mean this. Don't let me forget to tell you again. Okay. When you guys leave on the corner here, there's a place called Dad's Donuts. Oh, and I'm they're talking getting donuts on the way here. They're really apple fritter. Oh, I'm not man. even just like this is the greatest donut you ever have. It's like a fucking. It's as heavy as a baby. This thing they give it to you in a brown paper bag. <laughs> That's it's, an interesting weight choice. Oh. It's as heavy as a baby. <laughs> like you just Deep go around picking baby. up babies all the time. It's. The <laughs> I pick up babies. I'm like, wow, this thing's as heavy as an apple like, fritter. You'd say like, <laughs> <laughs> daddy's apple fritter or dad's apple. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Um, but for real, the Apple Fritter at Dad Donuts at the corner of Buena Vista and West Victory Boulevard in Burbank, California, is to die for. Are you I had friends visit. <laughs> <laughs> I ought to be. I will be after this if you could right? send me the link to this episode. Yeah, you bet, buddy. I'm going to tell them just go to the 644 mark of this episode. By the way, obviously, we're recording this in real time. I don't know what the time will be, but I, oh, I don't edit. We, whatever we Oh, my God. Do, is it 644? Did I nail the length of our conversation? Five. Like fifteen ish. That's not bad. Ain't buddy. that the way? Life is yeah, going yeah. quicker than you think. Yeah. I thought it. Oh, it's going slower than you think. I thought it was more time. Now, do we get to use the code word DJ? And, yeah. Uh, Go to Daddy's Dad. Do- Dad's Donuts. <laughs> Daddy's Donuts. Did you t- slash slash DJ. Add it to Daddy? Dude? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for real though, Dad Donuts. I will sponsor you for sure. I've never believed in a product so wholeheartedly. Is it just the fritters that are? Oh good? no, they oh, have everything. Everything's amazing. I went there for a Thai iced coffee the other day. It was delicious with the boba in it. The bubbles. That. Oh, man, I was just in Southeast Asia for the month of August, and I was drinking Thai coffee like crazy. And Vietnamese coffee, have you ever had it? It's got condensed milk in it. Holy shit, guys. I had like five a day. It's the greatest thing you'll ever... Flavor-wise, it's like me and my girlfriend were just like, we would have... I I don't know where to get Vietnamese coffee around here, but I would have it five times a day for the rest of my life. Well, then I haven't looked into how bad it is for you, though, but condensed milk can't be too good. It's like basically like sugar paste. That's why it's That's, so good then. <laughs> yes. <It is>. <laughs> well, <laughs> we had a good time. It's like they found a way. You know that cornstarch stuff you used to play with as a kid? You squeeze it, gets yeah. hard, and it just melts again. You squeeze it, gets hard. It's like condensed milk, but full of sugar. It's just very thick. Oh, my God. Yeah, that sounds about right. To go back to your question about Dad Donuts, <laughs> yeah. they got churros, they got uh, regular coffee that's fucking delicious. Only one question before you go on, not to interrupt, but are they going to be open when we leave? Hell yeah. Okay. They're open late too, and they okay. open it. Because you get I me all excited about it, and then it's like, oh, but they're going to be closed. I'm like, well, fuck. Well, wait around even if they are closed, because I'm pretty morning. sure these motherfuckers <laughs> open at 4 a.m. Wow. I saw that on the sun. I think they're up at 4 a.m. Family-owned business from everything I can ascertain. Okay, well, you know what's happening now, right? Yeah. I'll come over with you guys, too. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I'll give You're you going like, to the gym. I know, but I, I'm not going to eat the whole apple fritter. That's the thing. This fritter is so good, you could feed a family of five for a week. I'll split so you, you shouldn't eat the whole thing in one sitting, but I'm here to tell you, you will. <laughs> That's why I'll break it in half. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't do it, but you will. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving That's on hilarious. from Dad Donuts, your takeaway is you would die from eating all the good Mexican food. Oh, and, dude, uh, the Mex- uh, Pinches right by the, the comedy store. Have you been What's it called? Pinches. Pinches. Which, uh, which direction from the store? So you walk out the front and hang a left, head down east. It's I don't think I have been there. Pink good Tacos. Food? Oh, yeah? Pink Tacos is? It's across the street. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I it's haven't the been there one. either. It's yeah. good, man. Yeah? It's fucking good. It's so fucking good. Yeah? We've been there three times already this week. It's close to the store, so it makes it easier. But mm-hmm. it's, it's, and you guys are staying near the store, right? Yeah, we're yeah. in uh, we're in West we're just off of uh, Santa Monica Boulevard. That's great, man. Like we were talking before we started rolling. I like the idea of living in that area. Burbank's pretty boring. It's so But beautiful. I kind of like the boring aspect. I go down there, I do my shows, and then I come back up to safety and solitude. <laughs> Two of my favorite things yeah, in the world. Yeah, but solitude's amazing. Don't you get... S- I used to be the kind of guy who who I wanted to take the attention all the time, and I get it from stand up now. Now I want my, I I take safety over the fucking oh, there's always something to do because I get tired and I don't want to do anything anyways. So I'd and rather- we're out in it anyway. Like I'm gonna be out at at the shows, and I got that. Yeah, I fix get that fix. I saw earlier today another comic who was living right in it, and what they have in terms of space and everything like that. Dude, I'd tell you in a heartbeat. Like, if you were like, so which of the, no question, out here, nice little place like this, amazing. Yeah, and uh, I'm close to the Burbank Airport. So I so fly, you fly a lot. out of here? If ever possible, and I don't have to go down to LAX. So if I go back to, up to Canada, Toronto, uh, oh, thanks, dude. Almost knocked over an ashtray here. A decorative one, of course. Um, 
And uh, it's beautiful. You know, I worked at a channel where we had to describe everything for blind people for a few years. I was a host. And uh, so when I would be in a situation, I'd be like, I'm here at the Santa Claus parade. Behind me, there's Santa Claus and a float made by Optimist International. Whatever. I would describe what I saw. But now, whenever I'm just doing something talking, like audio, some of my old tendencies come back where like something happened. I'm like, I need to let the people know that an ashtray just fell over <laughs> here because they're blind and they can't see it. Literally, everyone is blind right. right now. That's right. Um, so anyway, living right in it is nice, but I get to be near the Burbank airport for some flights, which is nice. I'm actually debating moving to Hermosa Beach right now. Me and my girl might who's, move right who's down. Who's there? Uh, the Comedy Magic Club. That's why her Comedy Magic there. Club. I perform there often. But other than that, you're a little bit away from everything. So I'm not going to stop doing shows, obviously. So I'd have more of a drive up into the city every day. You do have a car? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got it here. I mean, some people don't, but I don't know how they do it. But uh, I this place that I have a lead on is like on the beach. I'm oh, yeah. like, I'm a dude from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. Thank you. And uh, I lived in Toronto, obviously. It's not like I'm a little small city guy, but you know what I mean. I'm just from Kitchener, Canada. I could live in Hermosa Beach, California on the fucking beach and still be close enough to the shows with my girl who's going to move here with me in January. I'm like, what are we even talking about here? What's the debate? <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty dude that's got to be a pretty good feeling like when you were sitting how, how old were you when you moved to toronto 23 okay so you're still in kitchener you're sitting at a little desk in a fucking elementary school right wide-eyed what's my future hold i don't know what i want to be and then some like right now right now where you're at that's it, is that not fucking amazing like beyond your wildest dreams already yeah yes i'm gonna kill you if you answer me like that. to answer your question <laughs> yes <laughs> But I obviously don't think that way every no, day. You're no, always thinking, what's the next step? And like, yeah. I hope I haven't plateaued by any means. Like, no. Uh, so yes, to answer your question, I'm very appreciative. This is really cool. Like I live it's, in Los Angeles. It's, it's cool. Yeah, man. But then you're like, what else? So yeah. But yeah. Well, you're an artist. You're never going to be satisfied. I think there will come a point after that one TV appearance. Yeah, you right. Say, I'm done now. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> But it's great. But that that same uh, that same lack of fulfillment, like okay, I've done it all. I'm content with everything I've done, right? Mm -hmm. as soon as, that's that old saying: "Safe is dead," right? As soon mm -hmm. as you decide, hey man, I've I've done, I'm good. That's it. You're done. It's so true. the fact that that we're constantly like, okay, now what's next? That what's next means that you haven't plateaued. It means that you haven't you haven't peaked because that hunger in you to keep going and growing is still there. Yeah, 100%. Even you coming all the way to LA from Ottawa, and then that's one part of the step, and then you're making the effort. You found a way to get up at Comedy Store last night. That's not easy. So, and you too, Mike, I don't know your full story yet, but I know if this is your third time, you're making an effort to come back. So those little things are what build up. Like, So last night, I'm sure you learned a, f a shit ton from your Comedy Store three minutes appearance, right? I, I learned I need to start working on shorter sets. <laughs> But that's a huge yeah. learning. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's growth. Those are, that's what's really cool. Is like, I still, those are the feelings I value where I conquer a new, like, there's clubs around here that I know I want to, like, do better at. And you, when you have those sets where you feel like that was the next step I needed to take in my growth. That Last night at Comedy Store, my three minutes, that's the best three minutes I've ever done because that's a hard skill. You're like, what the hell do I do for three minutes? So that felt like, oh, cool. I, I think I might have learned how to do a three-minute set Okay. to get better at it. Well, that's good. It didn't show. Dude, I'll tell you right now, I had full confidence before you went over there. I'm like, he's going to go fucking destroy. Full confidence. When you did, I was like, of course. I wasn't, yeah, I wasn't like, oh, thank God. No, I wasn't worried. I wasn't fucking worried. <laughs> but, when you're, but you saying like, okay, it was the best I've done and it's still, I, I get it, man. Like, it just, uh, I was talking to Kathy Buckley. She's a comedian. She's been around for a while. She wears hearing aids. And uh, she's just been so great to me since I moved here. And I was having lunch with her today before you boys came over. And uh, she was just asking me, she's like, did you like always want to be a stand up? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, wow. And like, and just how surprised she was. I was like, oh, yeah, that is really cool that i have always wanted to be a stand-up and i'm a stand-up now and i'm getting to like do it and i still love it 
Meaning, well, like, I'm not done with it. I want yeah. to keep pushing. That's cool. Like, that's not to be taken for granted. Not at all. And it actually, just having you having brought that up will kind of help us at least begin to start this bit of an interview process. Is you have always wanted to do it. How did you get started in stand up? I did an open mic at um, or the amateur night at Yuck Yucks in Toronto. I was still living in Waterloo. I was going to school, going to Laurier University. And, uh, Third year, my third year, I went to amateur night and I had wanted to do it for a couple of years. I'd been like writing jokes in my little joke book and uh, I just didn't have the balls yet. And then I went for the first time third year, so it would have been like 20 and loved it. And I was like, yep, I still finished school. So I had one more year of school left after that. Did it, did a few more amateur nights at the Kitner Yuck Yucks, a few more at the Toronto one. So I probably in those couple of years did stand up like 10 or 15 times. Wow. And then moved to Toronto full time after school when I was 23 and just dove into it. Like, so I count that as when I started because I've been just doing comedy nonstop since 23 so nine years that's it you've been doing comedy nine years 2009 yeah jesus christ same year i started yeah <laughs> yes I, that's amazing dude because i tell people all the time i'm like we came up together we, we used to work absolute comedy together we did yeah. shows together one of okay so i'm going to tell a story uh i'll try to make it relatively brief i think i've told the audience my my experience with going to the canadian comedy awards but this is a story i tell people all the time because because all sorts of people talk about you now with all the accolades and everything that you have right well, i say cool dj i go dj's my buddy i'm like we we came up together we were around the same started around the same time working clubs and everything like that partied in ottawa we've had some good times yeah man yeah yeah and i told people this is the story i told them was when I went to the Canadian Comedy Awards in 2012, I, I don't want to say I peaked early, but I had a lot of success early on, and then I've had some hiccups that have made me question everything. Uh, so this part of this trip to LA, you're saying me coming all the way down, I've told people this is part of my defibrillating, my my comedy hunger, is trying to get hungry and excited. And I'll tell you, it has worked. It has worked. I loathe, instead of coming down here and be like, oh, I have A stuff and I want to work on new stuff. Now I'm like, fuck, my, I need to learn how to do small stuff because my even my A stuff, I can't condense it to make it work in three minutes. So anyways... Uh, in 2012, I went to the Canadian Comedy Awards. Uh, I sat on a bus for like six hours to get there, dressed in a suit so that I was ready for whatever. I was sweating. It was a horrible experience. I got to the the hotel. There's tons of people I know, but nobody's really hanging out with anybody. It was very clicky or whatever. People were very like negative, whatever. And then I ran into you. Ah. And you were. it was great to see you. You weren't treating it like it was this thing, like, like, oh, who's around and who needs this? You came up, you were hanging out with me. We hung out for over the course of the evening. And I was like, of all the people that I knew, the other comic friends or whatever that I had or whatever, everyone was treating it so industry. I'm like, but DJ hung out with me. Like DJ stuck around. We got to be buddies, got to have a good time. I'm like, I felt so much more comfortable having a comic there and who's actually acting like a friend and not just a colleague or whatever. Huh. I'm like, that was really cool. I'm like, that's, that's a good dude. I'm like, he wasn't, he wasn't there. I don't think you were nominated for anything that year. You were just there to go, to hang out, to have a good time. I think see you're right. On. Yeah. And I was just like, that's fucking awesome. Like, here's a guy who's, of everyone else there, they were all there to like either support their friend directly or, mm. or like, you know, get something awarded or whatever. They were all, sh and they were shitting on people. Like Ottawa, Ottawa at least has the decency to shit on you behind your back. Everyone yeah. seems, it makes you feel very supported. Yeah. And I remember that was one of the first times that I saw like kind of a real ugly side of the business. I knew it was there, but it was just never in your face. Mm -hmm. And sitting in that room, listening to people like shit talking other nominees and yeah. how negative. I remember asking myself, I'm like, I'm like, fuck, am I ready to be a part of this business? Like, mm -hmm. can I withstand joining something that's like just angry and bitter i'm like i just i don't know but you're being there you're being a good friend at night just hanging out and like i said you were there to just support you know hey i'm there to see things and whatnot i don't know it was a great time i was always i always tell people that story when they talk about you i'm like yeah man he was like one of the only people who made like a really kind of industry experience like pleasant well that's really nice thanks man yeah, well, i mean i'm happy that uh <laughs> that you have that memory of me it was i remember hanging with you i didn't uh know kind of the whole backstory there but yeah, it can it can get clicky, right? I feel like friendships are real friendships are like I don't want to say hard to come by, but right, yeah, you never know somebody's intentions sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the, well, that's the thing with the industry, right? It's, and it's nice like you can go a few years. Sometimes people don't see each other; just paths don't cross. Mm -hmm. But it's nice to 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 know, like I like I said, there's a I can count on one hand how many times I see guys 
succeeding where I'm like, this makes me feel good too. Not, hey, I'm just happy for you, but this makes me feel good that the right people seem to be getting the right advances and things like that. But I just remember when I got to those awards, I had people like, I'll say Dom, Dom Pere, yeah, who is a friend, but he walked up to me right away. He's like, oh, you got nominated? Hey, just so you know, you're not going to win. Like, I'm like in the door telling you just, hey, don't get your hopes up. You're not from Toronto. It's a Toronto awards show or whatever. So I just remember feeling like, fuck, even the people that I, I know and are friends with are like, just they can't wait to take the wind out of your sails. So just having you there being positive, you know, and not just like, hey, what's up? And then fucking off. Like I, I felt very alone that day. So having having a friend come up and say, hey, how's it going? And just just being a buddy. It's good to see you. What's new? Whatever. It wasn't anything to like that. I just want you to know that that goodness in you was was uh, was received and it's appreciated, buddy. Well, I'm happy, man, because uh, it's enough negativity in the right. world. So it's good to. Yeah, I, I try to exude that kind of positive vibe. So I'm happy. That's a memory. I remember being happy to see you just a couple of years ago. Forget the name of the little satellite room uh, in between the the um early and late show on saturday at absolute oh right the clock tower yeah you were running that I and i that went the, over and oh uh, the the uh, velvet room uh, out in canada yeah, yeah 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 and uh there weren't that many people that night but it was good vibes because you were hosting it and it was a fun time so i, I was hadn't happy had a chance to see you there i hadn't had a chance to see you do a longer set in a while uh, so it had been like a big dude you were fucking hilarious thanks fucking man. hilarious no it's great it's it's great to see all the the advancements and everything like that 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 you've done this is just turning into like a you know dick sucking festival whatever but, but yeah but i mean like, hey fuck you man <laughs> <laughs> i have developed a much thicker skin since but it's just like i said it was one of those it was one of those first times early on where you just go oh it's not not everyone's friends and yeah you know it's not just one person mad here and there but you know you're getting something it's like it's just watching people like a, it was like a whole room of spoiled children at some point yeah I also didn't realize how unimportant the Canadian Comedy Awards were at the yeah. time either. They felt important to me at that time too. I mm, think yeah. we were all kind of young and we hadn't wisened up yet to what was yeah. legit and what wasn't. But at the same time, I don't even want to take away from its importance when it was around because uh, we have so little in Canada to celebrate it. So if there was an attempt to to hand out trophies and recognize the best of Canada, then that's important. And maybe with some new leadership or something they can come back because i think it's it, the, canada needs something like that yeah all that talk of oh there's so much canadian talent but none of it there's no top for it to float to there's right there's not enough of an infrastructure in canada and sandra badalini's doing yep. a big thing trying to bring attention to that issue and and uh and the Junos. Well, you were a part they of our the Junos. The Junos now. Yeah. To the, yeah. To the best comedy. I, I was that's, nominated that's for good. it this year. Yeah, good yeah. And Yeah, and I went to Vancouver for the Junos and felt like a fucking big shot at the Junos. It's nice. important. I was like, yes. cool. Like, yeah. Ivan won it. Ivan yeah. Decker. He's my buddy. Actually so, yeah. yeah. And I'm so happy for him. He's got a Juno now. That gives Canadian comedy importance. Yeah. Well, yeah. you were a part of, I mean, you, you were going to be a part of the project that uh, myself, Jeff McKay, and uh, Ian McKillen were working on. Oh, yeah, McKillen yeah. Were, what happened to on. that? That's ex essentially exactly the reason San Sandra and the rest of them are working on this. We were told early on, my, my listeners have heard this before, but just so that you know. Mm -hmm. And so the listeners, so just so you guys know, DJ was going to be a part of this project, uh, as well as a lot of other comics at his level, which is to say we had an insane amount of talent. Just to give more context, so after this episode, you go, oh, that was just one of the people? We were going to do something for Canada's 150th, have a show in all parts of the country, That's representing right. all kinds of comics. You had sent us a letter of, of interest. Yeah, or, or, yeah. Or, or Jeff, maybe I mean, you got denied the grant or we something? We got denied the grant, yeah. And here's the thing. Here's what happened is we, Jeff first off got there, um, spoke to them and said, are we eligible? This yeah. is what we want to do. Are we eligible? And they said, yes, submit all your paperwork. So Jeff handled certain portions of it. Ian handled certain portions of it. I handled portions. I got venues to all send letters saying that they want to have us at the at the venues. And these are all the venues that were not as popular. Like, so instead of uh, Edmonton and Calgary and Alberta, it would have been like Red Deer and Banff. So just mm. places, markets that don't get comedy as much. Yeah. And uh, all tickets would be 25 bucks. And you were going to be one of the comics on the show. And of course, all peoples of Canada represented. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. But as soon as as soon as we had everything, all that work, we submitted it and we got a response almost immediately afterwards saying, uh, you're not eligible. Hmm. And we're like, we we check with you. And they're like, no. You are this is what they said. Canada already has systems in place for things like this. Hmm. And we were like, really? And what well, are we they? would love to know what they are. Yeah. 
So that's the whole thing. So that whole thing, Sandra Kennedy, is that's the same council and everything like that that says stand up isn't an art form. Mm -hmm. So and they got a politician on their side. Yeah, I forget her name. A councilwoman, I think. I forget which. There was some heat on that like this month about about that person. Knock knock, Mister Speaker. It was like, oh God, please don't do comedy. They watch her do it and go, oh that that's the art form. No thanks. <laughs> oh God, I didn't see that. No, you didn't. Oh, it was hacky. It was the fucking hacky shit. But regardless she was still presenting her argument it was it yeah was sometimes cute. hacks get the most successful <laughs> let the people speak but yeah so that's what sandra's doing sandra just for for listeners yeah. the Canadian. and that's that's big i mean there was some i've heard comedians in canada say like why leave just stay there and make the system better from within and i'm not going to say there's no merit to that but like i love canada but I love living in LA, man. Like, yeah. it's not just about Canada and the entertainment industry. It's just like, this is cool. I'm in LA. Like, I'm, it's, it's at, I'm in November, the epicenter of it basically. all. Or oh, weather wise on its own. I mean, come on. Yeah. So, speaking yeah. of that, track your path from, from you know, comic in, in Toronto um, going up and then eventually like making the long decision to go to LA. What was the progression from there? Like, actually moving here and how did that turn about? Um, it was, uh, mentally, I just wanted to do it, like, from the start. Actually, I thought I wanted to go to New York City from the start. But, like, well, those couple years where the idea was kind of gestating in my brain, I used that yesterday, and I'm like, is that a disgusting word to use? Is there a better gestating? word I could use than gestating? The idea, that's a word you want to use, right? Percolating. I had an idea... I, dude, I think gestating works great. It works, right? It's not a weird word. I almost think that it's it's, it's a verbal strategy of yours to show two big words you know. Say a big one, they're like, well, I'm sorry, is that the right one? A percolating, so, percolating. Dude, I have a whole joke about how much I hate assholes who use a big word that you know is just them trying to make you think you're smarter. Yeah. But the kind of reveal is the asshole I'm talking about is me, so you are correct. <laughs> but sometimes I can't even think of the small word. The big word is the only one that comes. It's I not make, my fault. I make new words in my attempts to say big words. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool, too. Language is fluid. Uh, but so the idea was kind of growing in my brain and I right from the beginning because I had read all these books in those like couple years before I actually had the balls to start or when I was just doing it every once in a while. And I was soaking up all this information about like the New York comedy scene in the, you know, 60s and 70s and then LA in the 70s and 80s and, and just the path everybody had to take, the open mics and then the store, like the book I'm dying up here. Yeah. Um, I just romanticized it all and I just knew not that Toronto and Canada doesn't have their own history but I'm like I just wanted to try it out so uh then I made the finals of this NBC competition in 2011 I came down to LA I was two years into stand-up and uh the finals were on stage at the comedy store fucking bombed I mean like I was only two years into it I was up there with Great comedian, Dave Mihaj from Canada, the Lucas Brothers, Tone Bell, Solomon Giorgio, um, Owen Benjamin, uh -huh. like great comedians. And uh, it, it is Owen Ben. Yeah. So uh, I bombed, but NBC had like a convertible Mustang waiting for me at the airport, like my car rental. For the few days I was in town, so like wow. I landed in LA, my first time ever there, I'm 25, I'm two years into stand-up, I get a convertible Mustang, I go to my hotel, I perform at the comedy store, I fly back to Toronto, and yeah, like, yeah. I, like I said, I didn't have a great set at the store, but I was like, I need to move to LA, that was amazing. <laughs> so two years in, you knew you wanted to be here? Yeah, like it went from New York to LA pretty quickly, and then so... Um, even during that whole time, yeah, I got the NBC thing, but you just wonder, you're always like, am I good enough? When should I go if I do go? But then I got a couple little things like um, a Canadian Comedy Award or a couple little things along the way. And then when I got my first Conan, I was like, okay. So how did... I got to do this. Was so then I started Conan the green first? card. Was it Conan process. first or uh, America's Got Talent? Conan. Conan. So how did how did you get that? If you don't mind my asking, I won the homegrown competition at Just for Laughs. Okay. And the Booker of Conan was one of the judges. I see. And so, one of the greatest nights of my life. I win the competition. I come back to the green room. Um, Zoe from Just for Laughs says congratulations. Second person I see is JP, the Booker of Conan, and uh, he said, "Do you want to do a Conan spot?" 
Oh, and Zoe, when she said congratulations. I love how it's like a question and rather than, hey, you're doing Yeah, I was like, I'll check my schedule. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Zoe, I forget to mention, also said, hey, would you like to do a TV spot? Because Homegrown wasn't televised. So I found out I was doing a Just for Laughs television spot the next night, my first time ever, and that I was going to be doing Conan soon. So that was kind of like, oh, I guess I am a comedian. <laughs> you know, that was the first time yeah, I was like, man. I can, I got a shot at this thing. Yeah. Well, David Pride even says that, like, he's like, I'm in it for years and I still have times where I bomb, but I'm not afraid of bombing anymore. He's like, it, ha it sucks. Yeah. He's like, I'm not afraid of bombing anymore because he's like, I've bombed so many times and I I'm still in the business. It's not like I get people. He's not like just in the business. He's the best in the business, man. <laughs> I love Pride's David Pride. It's fucking hilarious. Yeah, that guy. I love him. Every time I see him. I love the way his brain works. Yeah. He's a smart, yeah. hilarious dude. I interviewed him last year. There's a great up. That's this is that's the episode he's telling this business. Like um, I stopped being afraid of bombing a long time ago. Again, it sucks, but it no shows. Gonna, he no bombs a lot. kick you out of the business because you bomb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe you should be a little more scared of it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just to end Fuck. this dick suck fest over here. You know what? Hey, David Pride, suck my dick, man. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The, I think that it's a side effect of it being sunny and beautiful all the time. That I'm in such a good mood, and I want to share positivity. It's true. I might have to. I didn't. I don't think I wanted to move to LA until I saw Burbank. I've already been yeah. here for five days. Like, like when you're like, eh, it's boring here. I'm like, yeah, bring on the boring, dude. I get to go to the excitement, but then I get to leave the excitement. I don't want to be in the excitement because when I wanted to calm down. Look out my window and look at the... I'll hold your mic for okay. a sec. I know you got headphones in. You'll be right... Josh will be right back. Look at the view out my bedroom window back there. Like, wait, I wake up. It's just hills. I mean, not just hills. They're beautiful, but... Fucking hills in Ontario. <laughs> yes. But I wake up, I look at that, and I'm like, yeah, life is good. And it's hard. You're right. It does become a little hard to be negative it has its ups and downs by the way like la is pretty lonely like everyone just doing their own thing and uh it's not like a perfect you got to drive everywhere so it's not a perfect place to like meet That's up with my people. life now i'm driving all the time mm -hmm. and i'm lonely i live with jason and two other well and simon and another comic and i'm like ugh. really yeah jason just, lawrence yeah really yeah isn't he like fucking loaded from <laughs> <all of us? laughs> the the single biggest question I'm asked whenever people find out Jay has roommates, they're like, why does he have roommates? It's not financially. He's just a lonely person. Huh. <laughs> I wish everyone could see the Interesting. Yeah, it's just, I, I don't, I, he's not like, will you move in with me? I'm lonely. Like, you know, Jay, it's not. But he just, he likes having roommates. I think that's, that's what I said, man. It's that, it's that, that fucking comics brain where we don't get happy and satisfied with where we're at. It's the constant chase, the anger, the inside. What's next? Am I good enough? Like all that shit that, mm -hmm. that keeps you going. Again, like, this is still surreal to me. You know what I mean? When we were both comics, you know, doing an absolute gig or whatever, it's like, oh, we're just two guys living in Canada trying mm -hmm. to do some shows. Like, it blows my mind. I Like, it's, like I told you, again, the dick sucking will stop. But the idea, it's surreal for me. I'm sitting in Burbank, California, looking out your fucking bedroom window at the hills, which is insane. Yeah, I and like we're, that. And we're talking comedy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it was, dude, it was unreal to see your face on Conan. And I'm like, that's amazing. I'm like, this is fucking great. Then on America's Got Talent, which, by the way, I will say this. This is not to slag any of my other friends because my other real friends have done similar late night shows. You've had good sets. Because as much as I know that those guys are great comics, I've seen their, I've seen some of them on Conan. I've seen some of them in other places. And it's like, ugh, that wasn't a great set. Mm. You know? Thank you. So, yeah. yeah. So it you actually, like, not only did you do those shows, you did great on those shows. Thanks. Yeah, I, uh, thank you. Yeah, again. See, guys, this is what being a comic is. It doesn't matter how much everyone else loves what we do. We're like, ah, oh, yeah. I still hate I get, myself. I still yeah. hate myself. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no hatred. Know. No, no hatred. No, no. Yeah. But, it's, but that's, but, but like I said, if you were like, oh, yeah, great. Like, y you might want to stop then if you felt good <laughs> all the time. It's that, it's that whole, yeah, well, there's other things to do. Like, yeah, no, that I'm proud. progress. I think having pride in what you do is important. So I am proud of all those things and I appreciate you saying yeah, that. No worries. And it does mean a lot to me. Um, and then again, you always want to get better. Yeah. But I, I felt, when I saw myself on Conan the first time, like when I was on TV, I was like, holy shit, <laughs> that's <laughs> me. Like, you know, it blew <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah. fucking mind. So uh, it's been cool, man. And uh, I think it's just important to like, 
the longer you do it now, I'm like, remember how much fun that was and how cool this is. Don't just like settle into like, yeah, this is what I do. So I always just try to remember that even when I get up on stage, I'm like, how fucking cool is this? I'm talking to you. You guys are listening. You're laughing. We're having yeah. a good time. I'm try- I'm turning into a bit of a hippy dippy dude, but I feel like all the negativity you were talking about, the best way to get away from it is to like just run completely away from it to the other side. And I've had a couple of friends who are like, you can't be a comedian and be positive. I'm like, I'm not saying I can't be cynical. Right. Or, but if my intent is to always make people feel good, I actually have more liberty to go into weird, dark areas because they trust that in the end, they're not the ones that are going to get hurt. I'll examine weird shit or whatever. But, yeah. And so I've been doing a lot of crowd work. And when I have that positive outlook, I feel like people will give me more because they know I'm not going to fucking you know, use the information they give me to bring them to a bad place. So it's been a concerted effort in life and comedy. And I know that's a hippy dippy sentiment, but I feel like it's working. Yeah, man. Well, it's, like I said, it seems like you're doing okay. I like we got daddy's donuts. Down the street. You got to get some daddy's donut at the corner of Buena Vista and West Victory Boulevard. You want to talk about positive sentiments. I have nothing. Baby but positive rated sentiments donuts for daddy's donuts. Use the code word DJ for 15% off on crullers. That's right. Oh, do they have crullers here? That's a Canadian thing, right? Oh, no. I think they got crullers. They got the old fashioned. Yeah, they got oh, crullers. It moved. It moved. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, dude, I look like I'm nothing but donuts. <laughs> and I know, but the I'm shaved tra- head looks good on you. Does it? Yeah, I yeah. started to just. But you got a good head of hair too. You should. I, dude, it's there's a little spot in the back that's going thin, and I I grew it long, and my hair is thin enough everywhere that the long hair was dark, and you just see through it even more. I'm not that guy who's gonna do a comb over or put fucking powder or paint to cover it up. So I'm like, fuck it, you're all gone. Some of you are trying to revolt. I'm firing everyone before it quits. I think we're our own worst enemy, and you you have a fuller head of hair than you're saying, and but it looks good the Thanks. the way you have it. Well, I had a lot of people saying to me, "He's like, it's okay. You're allowed to be a little bit bald," and I'm like, "Yeah, but you know what? I was a little bit bald and not really worrying about it." And when more and more people were like, "Hey, it looks like you're balding," I'm like, "All right, well, fuck it. Then I'm bald. Let's 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 not just be transitioning. Let's fucking do it. <laughs> no transitions <laughs> for Josh. <laughs> no." Black or white? No, I'll binary. do. Hey, listen, I'm gonna sit in the middle. Let's take it so long. Get there. It's the most moxie I've had for anything in a while. Basically, it's just all right. Fine, then I'm bald, and I'll accept it, and I'll learn to live with it. Did you grow your beard longer when you shaved it? No, or? I've had a beard for years. Yeah, it's always yeah, been left it. Just left yeah. it. Yeah. And now I'm like, well, a beard with the bald head, and I'm like, you feel tougher now? No, no. I, I'm a sweetheart. I can't fucking believe it. I'm like, uh, if if maybe it'll keep me alive in L.A. is having the bald head and the beard, and the like, oh, it's pretty big. You know, if I try to take a swing or pull something out of his back pocket, he might fall on me. So <laughs> it's a safety thing. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm, 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 uh, I am loving this city, man. Like I said, the first few days you, when you were here your first time, were you overwhelmed? Yeah. I have a vivid memory. Are you going to say something? Yeah, yeah. Speak to that. I want to, I was curious to be in the uh, I was, I have this vivid memory because the NBC competition was like right before Christmas. I think it was December 12th or something and i was here alone and i was staying at i think the sheridan just like by the nbc universal buildings there not far from here and uh it's like the universal studio thing there like there's like the whole it's like a a tourist area there's like indoor skydiving there's a movie theater they're like blasting music it's like i forget the name of the place but universal studios or something and I was there all alone. There was like nobody because it was dead season. I'm eating a burger, just listening to um, Usher and David Guetta. Give you everything tonight. Right. And it's a day I'm performing at the comedy store that night for the first time in my life. I am I know no one in LA. I'm just sitting there by myself eating a burger. I went and watched Harold and Kumar's. Like Escape Harold, from Guantanamo Bay I think or that was the one, yeah. yeah. But No, there was a Christmas movie, wasn't there? Oh, was Harold there? Harold and Kumar's Christmas. Is that I think one was, like eight years old already? I oh, think so. Sure. But I went and I saw that and I was the only one in the theater. Wow. And then I went home or back to my hotel, got ready for my show. I was just alone the whole day. I was just like nervous, but like not adept enough at like dealing with them. So being like, I'm not nervous rather than being like, yes, you are. How are you going to use that energy? And like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I went and I did the show at the store that night, but I remember getting the tour of like backstage and just like, just feeling the reverence for the place and the nerves from it. And, uh, 
yeah, I just didn't, I learned a lot from it, but it obviously wasn't the best set based on everything I just described there. But, uh, <laughs> but it was really like, it was kind of like powerful just feeling that next level so early in my career. Like I was two years into living in Toronto and to, to get a taste of it. Cause yeah, I didn't have a great set, but I got a few laughs and it kind of made me like physically feel the spot I wanted to get to. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure being in Toronto ahead of time too makes a difference. Cause again, I'm coming from Ottawa. So I get to go to Toronto for a week and it's just a visit. But yeah. once you learn how to be in a big city, that getting across it and getting around it takes time. It's a long time. Yeah. There's always rooms. There's always comics. Like that's the thing that's crazy for me. It's like, you know, in, in Ottawa getting on, you know, you can do it maybe one or two places. Yeah. A couple, couple times. So why do you stay in Ottawa then? <clears throat> I don't know. I get a, like, <sighs> I've talked about it before, but basically I was, I was getting a lot of work in Ottawa. Um, it, then I got into a relationship. If I moved to Toronto, that hurt the relationship. That moving the relationship to Toronto wasn't an option. So mm -hmm. I didn't want to give that up just to go to, to that. And I was getting work as a comic. I'm like, you know what? I can go to Toronto when I need to go to Toronto. You know, I can go to Montreal when I need to go to Montreal. But why do I have to live there? That, mm -hmm. was, that was my thoughts. Why do I have to live there? Yeah. So I'm, I'm very confident that 2019 is probably my year that I'm going. Cool. Well, it's an easy move if you want to do it. Like, you're yeah. not in the relationship anymore, right? Yeah. It's literally four hours away. You have friends there. Yeah. It's a little bit more expensive, as you know. But other than that, if you want to go, not too many deterrents holding you back. Well, that's kind of it. I got a lot of creature comforts living with Jay, let me tell you. He is doing quite well, and I benefit from all of Yeah, it. I understand <clears throat> that. But comfort never really should be the impetus for any decision. Well, that's struggle. that's exactly it. Yeah. So, well, I shouldn't say that. Comfort is important, but your stand-up career appears to be important to you. Like you just said, there's more rooms. Yeah. It seems like It's more well, that's that was exactly it. I got comfortable not just in living, but with my stand-up. I'm like, I've got this time and I'm getting work. I started doing crowd work all the time. So, I was basically like, well, I'm not writing anything new because I'm mm -hmm. so busy trying to do all this other stuff over here. So I would do crowd work as a way to to work my creative muscle. I'm like, well, I didn't write any new jokes, and I that's don't want a to do huge the ones creative that I muscle, have. though. Eh, I agree. I think so. I enjoy being creative. I would walk to the stage in my head, think, "Gee, I wonder what we're going to talk about," because I yeah. haven't planned anything. We're it's gonna a great, and you can work on material now, but that's a solid base to work with. And like, we're again, this is going to be hippy dippy, but this thing is a fucking marathon anyway. So you've it's not like you just completely quit. You're in Ottawa, still a great comedy city. So if you want to take a jump into a different area i.e toronto do it but like you're not starting from scratch you you know you're a great comic so oh, right. ottawa Thank you. Ne isn't necessarily toronto or la but you're getting up and crowd work is i mean if that if you have that in your back pocket you can go anywhere yeah if you're comfortable doing that i'm co I so love many doing comedians are scared as all hell of crowd work are they i'm not no, it's no, a good skill. I'm scared of doing three minutes fucking sets. <laughs> Terrified. I didn't want to get called last night. I got the spot at the OR and I was like, I don't want to do it. I did it. I did it. Didn't want to do it. I know that feeling well. That's a powerful <laughs> thing. Fighting yeah. through that. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm actually doing this. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I don't have three minutes. I have. Yeah. I'm like, what when did you do decide? I, um, I two and a half because I took. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that cool? I don't want to. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it up. Okay. Mike, you got it. Okay, wicked. I, this is the best. I want to have a producer now for the show all the time. A young like, he's Jamie. Great. He gets he gets to interject and ask questions. He he helps. I have I kicked over a beer earlier today during another interview. Oh yeah, yeah. So the audience. So it's funny because uh, the audience is going to listen to the the regular one man podcast episode, which comes out tomorrow. So Mikey is going to be recording that with me. We're just going to be basically talking about the last week and everything we've been doing, this and that. That's a good week. That's some good content. Right yeah. There. But your episode. So the thing is, Brian's episode that we did earlier today that'll come out on Friday. Mm -hmm. Your episode will be next Friday. Okay. So it's always like they always on a Friday morning they wake up. Oh, a bonus episode. Thank you, Josh, with someone of note. So. This, this, Just, we're talking about this stuff. They have already heard what happens tomorrow or whatever later on. Yeah. Okay. I always so like that way. Andy, Andy Hendrickson is going to be tomorrow. We're recording with that. Oh, so yeah. Andy will be like three weeks from now. 
Being a regular listener of yours is like watching Memento, just trying to put it all together. <laughs> okay, so this happened then. <laughs> Sometimes I'll do a bonus episode with someone on a Monday, and then I'll record my podcast on a Tuesday, and I'm like, I had a great interview yesterday that you guys will hear on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're listening to me before, eh, whatever. Yeah, exactly. You have to basically map it out on a wall like a crime. Yeah, I'm just mapping it like an FBI montage. Um, I just want to say, David Pride, of course, don't suck my dick. You're a great person, and I couldn't let that be the last word on David Pride. Really? You're still sitting with that? I don't know, man. Dave's a great dude. Such a wicked sense of humor, too. Dave's one of those guys who always treats everybody with an yeah. insane amount of respect. Like, you, you, you remember like that opener. shit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a good dude. When I go to Montreal or Ottawa there's, or Vancouver, that's what I love is like having done it the amount of time i've done it there's like people you see you're like man i was hoping you were going to be here this weekend yeah you know yeah that's always a good feeling mm -hmm. so for you i wanted to ask this too again i we could just shoot the shit again we were talking about donuts i was more excited i just want to move back to that i don't uh <laughs> was the america's got talent thing yeah how did that because i saw i saw that some for some reason before i saw your first conan that's why i wasn't sure which one came really first they must have been close together in terms they, of time. uh weren't that close don't mind me, by the way. It's, uh, I just looked at the clock, but I don't want that to make you think that I'm like overly concerned about time. No, I, I just should, look at the should. clock just like to know what time it is, you know? Um, Are you doing well enough for a watch yet? <laughs> I, I take like it off when I get home. I actually wear a watch, but the second I get home, I have to take off the watch, take off my socks, and change into comfy clothes. Yeah, People I'd who don't get comfy pants. right away blow my mind. Yeah. Yeah, like a watch for me. I like having it on, but the second I'm home, get that wrist free, baby. The watch I can handle staying on? pants get the fuck out of my yeah life. yeah even the socks can sometimes stay on oh yeah which, which makes me look wicked ridiculous because I'll, I'll wear them fucking high up so i'm walking around boxers pulled up and i often wear dress pants and stuff so it's like the black old man socks mm. oh boy, nice I'm painting a picture with my words but yeah no i get it get home pants off people walk around the people who wake up and put pants on and do up a shirt and then just wander around the house doing stuff i'm like what the fuck is wrong with you yeah i know yeah you see people who are still in their dress clothes that like, like you know, 11 at night or something. They've been home from work for six hours. You're like, what in the fuck yeah, like what are kind of, you doing? What chapter of the secret are you trying to implement in your life right now? <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> it's like, I, I sleep stay, in this. Dress for the job you want. The one where you're still working at fucking 11 o'clock at night. What the hell's wrong with you? Um, oh, what is that? You don't edit at all, but I need to do something real quick. Can I okay. just take five seconds? Right yeah, back. dude. I'd love to give the cash directly to you. Of I just <laughs> no, asked, no, I don't uh, want your cash. I just need to figure out. I do have some like online code I can give you though yeah, yeah. to get it. I just asked DJ. I paused while he was doing his thing to, to see if I get his album. I, I would very strongly recommend. I, I have to tell everybody first, if you want a sample of my buddy, you've got to check out his America's Got Talent. What is it? What do they call it? The, the audition clip or whatever? Yeah. Dude, it's fucking unbelievable. And something, can, can I mention this? I don't even know what the proper context is, so I, I might end up sounding like an idiot. Wouldn't be the first time. But for people to know that you're you're hearing impaired. So That's just, right. just in case, just in case anyone's listening, you've made many great fucking jokes just in reference to that. Again, yeah. referencing the, uh, the America's Got Talent clip will explain a lot, but... But like, dude, and you're act you you're not the kind of person like, well, I don't want to. You, you talk about it, you joke about it, you do a lot of self deprecating stuff. Yeah, yeah. If, as long as I feel good about the, I mean, I wear hearing aids. Who gives a shit? <laughs> right? Why wouldn't I joke about them, dude? When you do your last call joke, I'm like, I'm envious of that. I'm like, I wish. I just no more. Yeah. Sorry, buddy. No more. Only one of us can be the hearing aid guy around here. <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah, oh, that's amazing. It's um, amazing. Is that actually? When they're out, do you hear? Like, forgive me for asking. I, I forgot to ask me in the show if anything's yeah, ask off me whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. all good. Do you do you have without them? Do you still have like I guess very muted hearing or? How dare you ask me that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, like I'm. If I took them out right now, and like I take them out when I'm around the house, like that's another reason I right. like safety. I think. Yeah. Because if I if I'm walking around the house, deaf as shit, nobody's breaking in here. I'm good um so where the so, fuck are you leaving for uh i change, i think change this, movement really yeah and and my paint, girl's gonna move back with me soon paint the walls they you already painted nice you we're gonna paint we're gonna go somewhere walls. nice and new and just experience some nice. hmm? 
That's pretty nice. I don't think you're bitching about it. This is awesome. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. He said he wanted to change. I'm like, well, then paint the walls. Yeah, don't yeah. fucking leave. This is great. Yeah. No, it's I don't have. Good. I don't think if you need to move in the next fucking three months, I don't have enough time to get a green card because I'd take your place in a fucking second. <laughs> Just the and I haven't even tried Daddy's Donuts yet. I really <laughs> need to reach out to them. We're, you know what? They might take away my sponsorship contract because we keep calling it Daddy's Donuts. Like, you're killing us over here. <laughs> I, watch me. I know that I was calling it Daddy's to make it sound sillier. But, but then I'll be, I'll be trying to tag it later. I'm like, Daddy's Donuts. Where the fuck can I find it? And if we're doing food references or recommendations, rather, um, College Falafel at the corner of uh, College and Ozington in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, Ozington and College, I guess. Fuck. I already That's forget. What, what do you reference what first you in Toronto? Who fucking cares? College, no, uh, college, no, it's not like if you say the names in opposite orders at a different location. It's still it's true. Place. It's true. I just don't want all the Torontonians to be like, oh my God, he's not really from Toronto. He doesn't even say the street order. No, right. that's right. You're from LA now, motherfucker. <laughs> Sorry, Toronto. <laughs> yeah. What's yeah, the temperature the there right now? Yeah. What's the temperature right now? Oh, you bunch got, of Drake stands. Yeah. He got uh, the words backwards, but he lives across the street from Disney. by my good friend, Bardil and Oyana. Uh, they were my go-to in Toronto. Bardil wears hearing aids. They're a nice Albanian couple. And uh, they are just the hardest working, sweetest people. So Dad Donuts, they're my first sponsor. Second sponsor, uh, College Falafel at the corner of College Nosington in Toronto. Did you say that they both uh, Get the donair with the sweet sauce and thank me later. Okay. All right. So it's like the Halifax donair. Mm -hmm. you did, did you say that they both wear hearing aids? No, just uh, Bardil. Okay. When, when you said they both wear hearing aids, I had this stupid fucking story in my head of this meet cute where they both were sitting at a coffee shop and they put their hearing aids down on the table and they grabbed the rock oh this one's yours <laughs> oh that's so beautiful it's hacky as shit but it was funny <laughs> it was funny in my head <laughs> you know what i did last night oh my god i just forgot this i um i guess i just remembered this but um there's a video of a, a mom singing to her baby have you seen this and it just focused on the baby's face for two minutes just beautiful little like eight month old baby maybe and the mom just starts singing a rod stewart song to this baby and you watch this fucking journey this baby goes on listening to his mom sing starts smiling and crying and then smiling through the tears and like i was facetiming with my girl and she sent it to me you are lonely out here <laughs> oh my god dude i started fucking welling up i don't know this yeah. baby yeah. I'll show you this video and just watch it on your own. Don't watch it where you're going to have to posture around me or my... All right? And just let it out. Go on the journey with this baby. Buddy, I was listening to Wasted Time by the Eagles the other day. <laughs> doing electrical in a basement. I was basically doing one of the most manly blue collar things you'd be doing. Wasted Time comes on my fucking iPod. And I'm crying like a little bitch <laughs> twisting live wires together. that's amazing yeah, extra water lubrication. just dripping <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> wow. oh i get it i get it that's another thing with getting older too hey eh? it's just yeah. you start to find emotions that are like all right we've we've held back long enough yeah exactly yeah you, you mentioned a baby is that something you're looking at at some point in the future or is that uh if it, that, that's an odd ask question but yeah i think so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah? You guys have talked about it? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think so. I'm. <laughs> we talk about it for sure. I'm not in any rush. She isn't either, but I mean, fuck. I got four nieces and a nephew. I love them. They're great. Kids are great. It's a lot of work, but... You're not worried it'll slow down the travel and things like that? Yeah, that's why I'm not in any huge rush, because I don't want to just leave them alone they, so but, kids are great man i i won't say anything negative about kids but it's just it's one of those things like i said back in the relationship i couldn't leave because it was kids it had been just, it had been just the two of us we could have definitely yeah. anchors you yeah, yeah for sure and i have zero anchors right now i know i'm not taking the decision lightly but at the yeah. same time i mean they grow up too and then you can use your time wisely and still be creative when you do need to be home yeah. I just don't want to, like, I don't want to make that the whole reason. I love comedy. It's like, I'm not going to stop it. But at the same time, like, you're only on the earth one time. If if I do want kids, I don't want to, like, Spoiler wait Spoiler alert. Hello. 
<laughs> just once hey, what i might be wrong i haven't finished the movie my yet, podcast so is only big in india by the way yeah, unless you're Buddhist. like reincarnation <laughs> is basically well, i don't want to waste this life is I india india is not reincarnation is no, it? It's buddhism buddhism i'm also very ignorant uh it could, it could also not, be hinduism as well too i don't know well fuck i don't know anything again this place is beautiful everything or like again the hills everywhere in california everywhere i look there's hills everywhere like, again, you've lived in Toronto long enough that you, you get on the road and you're like, trees and ground and that's it. There's no hills and mountains. You don't look up and see houses up in the fucking hills or anything like you that. You guys been out to, like, the coast by Malibu or anything yet? No. Not yet, no. You? I don't get shot. No. Go, like, ASAP. Really? Fucking beautiful. The hills. You can even drive into the hills to homes, like, all the rich fucking mansions, like, right on the cusp of falling off these hills into the ocean. And really? it's beautiful, So man. where where? We go Malibu? Malibu's beautiful. You can go to like Zuma Beach. Um, that sounds cool. like I'm going to have to do exercise. Yeah. Oh, that's, <laughs> no. that's Zumba. Oh, no, Yuma. It's Yuma. Yuma. Okay, I was like, Zumba Beach. I don't want that. No, it's either Zuma or Yuma. I think. Anyway. Um, What's the donut? Santa Monica is even beautiful, but north of Santa Monica, too. Well, well, we're going to Santa Monica to see Andy tomorrow morning. So maybe we'll just leave extra early and fucking do you take say, a look. Oh, to see Andy. Oh, Andy okay. Hendrickson, yeah. Leave early, yeah. And and get a good day, and it's like beautiful out there. Yeah. Have you been to the coast at all? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Okay, you've seen it. Like, you, what parts have you seen? Uh, I've been to Venice. I've been to Hermosa. I've been to long coast that way. Nice. Yeah. What do you like better between Venice and Hermosa? Oh, well, Venice is a dump. I find. <laughs> What's that? Say? It's a bit of a dump. Venice, find, yeah, yeah, and it's yeah. nicer than it used to be. Yeah, really. really? Yeah, I heard it was yeah. real rough back in the day. Yeah, because yeah. they got like Google and stuff out there now, so I think it's actually kind of gentrifying a little bit. Like the a Google headquarters. Oh, I mean, oh, yeah. like, they suddenly gave them access to Google, and now <laughs> yeah. they have, to have knowledge all of a sudden. No, but from like, what I heard, like ten years ago, even <clears throat> Venice was way more of a dump than it is yeah. now. I had that mental stutter step when you said Google. They got Google out there, and I'm like. I thought you meant like the truck that drives around taking pictures. Yeah. They're like, they got Google out <laughs> there so people can see how shitty it is. Like, yeah, we yeah, better like, clean our up. <laughs> the world's in this. <laughs> Looking bad on street view. Oh, it only lasted God. for a split second. That's all it and takes then I was like, oh no, that's where the is, building is. Oh God, we got to clean up. Google's coming tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a fucking, yeah, ch children's aid services, whatever, checking it out. Oh, they's coming. We got to tidy up children's this stuff. Children's aid, that's whatever. where your voice went. I don't know. My goddamn brain. Children's aid, we got to clean up. I'm trying we're to think who comes to your house to us. judge, right? So yeah. it's like, oh, we're showing the property tomorrow. I just think it's fucking yeah. hilarious. But I this... like that you went with the negligent parenting, like the children's I'm, aid. Rep. I'm here to warn you, right? <laughs> this isn't even a real podcast. Look, this thing isn't on. I'm here hey, to you tell see, you. I told you all my plants die when my girl's not here, so I don't know. Yeah, if you can't maintain a plant. I you maintain just pour- them. They just aren't thriving and well, under you can't my keep. Pour water on a kid once a week and expect it to still be around. Once a week, you can't you think go they're his, getting that much his, water. <laughs> That's weird. We're in Los Angeles. What are you? <laughs> <laughs> it's a drought, my friend. This kid's gonna learn to suck it up and be a camel. <laughs> oh, so I I asked this and then we started chatting about other shit. I apologize. How did how did America's Got Talent come to be? You know, the time has come and gone to talk about that. Has you it? moved on from it. All right. Well, that's fine. It's over. Um, no. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Um, <coughs> must be coming down with something. <laughs> <laughs> the smog. Oh, I think fuck. It's the that's funny. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Can I look at this? <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't. DJ uh, has a fountain pen. But, uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I'll be honest. What is this? Tar? <coughs> Pure tar. Is it e e cigarette? No, it's not an e cigarette. <coughs> you could have said yes, I was giving you an out. <laughs> I would never lie about it being an e cigarette. It is so, a weed vape. Yeah. Which is legal in California. Oh, is it? Yeah, I just bought this, but fuck man, I gotta in Canada, I've cut down no, significantly. Thirty four percent tax on this legal fucking shit. Yeah, man. Making it legal. Everyone's like, yeah. Like, you pot's legal in Canada now. Yeah, no. Right? And so everyone's like, yeah. It's like, okay, so now it's run by the government and it yeah. costs more. Yeah. You know? So it's like, okay, were you really that excited about I've it? I've been trying to joke about that, like about how like I didn't get into smoking pot to support, you know, my local government. <laughs> like, these sons of bitches are pushing me into <laughs> cocaine here. <laughs> I don't want to I'm just trying a- to stay fucking Indian underground, man. Yeah. 
I don't, every time to go I'm mainstream. smoking this, I'm like, ah, yes, supporting the local infrastructure. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, fucking hilarious. But, uh, you know, I don't actually do it on stage. I tried it once, and... I don't really like joking about pot. It's just kind of so hard to say anything original mm-hmm. that I just rather. Do you know? Do you know what is super original? Mm. How you got on America's Got Talent? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I no, just thought it was kind, so funny. No, no, you know. I, I, hey, it's your job to keep this thing on track. No. America's Got Talent. I was uh, driving through Kansas City. I was doing a bunch of colleges in Kansas and Missouri. You're in Coca, correct? Uh, I'm sorry, Coca. Uh, no, or NACA. NACA, in, sorry. In Coca's, Coca's Canada, That's NACA, right, yeah. right. And uh, so I was just doing a bunch of uh, college gigs, and then I happened to be driving through Kansas City, and uh, there was a general audition like during the day at the convention center for America's Got Talent, and Amazing. I didn't have a show that night. So I wasn't in a hurry, so I said, fuck, I'll stop in. Amazing. And uh, then there were just like me and like you know a thousand other hopefuls all waiting for their... 30 second audition or 60 second audition in front of like short sets a bunch of producers and they liked me and then they sent me to other ones and then other ones i had three all together that day the final one was for the head producers of america's got talent and they said well we like you we'd like you to be in the first tv round in la so it all happened just from stopping in at a convention center in kansas city and at that point was doing a minute audition something that you had had or you're like fuck it i'm gonna have to we were in line basically whittling your your jokes down and going okay this is yeah exactly i had done conan that was i had done conan two years earlier wow so i was like and then i had been doing cruises for a while that's how i was making some money and doing corporates and but i was yeah i did i think like 13 cruises in two years so not a lot but i was I did a, a few, um, and I had learned that sensibility a little bit. Like, cruises really taught me to, like, be punchy. Like, they're not taking subtle punchlines on cruises. Like, be a fucking comedian, you know? Yeah. So that kind of helped me hone a couple of my jokes into that energy. I needed to do a kind of quick one-minute uh, AGT audition, I think, when I look back on why I was able to make it nice and tight. I think... Because not to like compare America's Got Talent audience and cruise ships too much, but they're both kind of that. They're they're uh, Lowest populist common denominator. Yeah, if, which is, I'm not even trying to say in a negative way. No. It's like, mm. can you make everyone laugh? Can it's you, a wide audience. Yeah, and it's, it's an audience that like yeah. it's not like an audience that has decided to step into a club mm-hmm. or go in. It's an audience. Everybody wants to eat McDonald's. There's only so many five star restaurants yeah. that people can afford. Yeah, so it's like just feed everybody at the cheapest. Yeah, restaurant. it's about knowing when people want McDonald's and, or when people want five star. You know, like yeah. And on cruise ships and AGT, boy, give me the fries. Give yeah, me the fries. Yeah. <laughs> but fuck, man, I love McDonald's fries. They bring me back so. There's a reason that people go. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So then I made it to the TV round of America's Got Talent. I made it through on the first one where I did like the whole partner joke, and I think mm-hmm. that's the one you're probably referencing. Yeah, and it was and it was great because do they do they train you? Not train you. Do they prep you in the sense that they tell you you're gonna be able to do a little bit of back and forth, or were you just essentially doing crowd work with the judges? Yeah, I knew that they would talk to me after. They didn't prep me or anything, but they said, you're going to do your set. You're going to walk out. You're going to say hello. They're going to ask you a a couple questions. Then you're going to do your set, and then they're going to talk to you a bit more. So that joke, I said, me and my partner, and then there's like a couple tags at the end of it. So I didn't say them in the hopes that they would ask me after, and then it worked out perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Um, So... Those weren't like totally off the top of my head, but I was like, please ask me the question to take me yeah. into these tags. And dude, you were so insanely likable oh, on that. You. you know it too, you cute, adorable little bastard. You just see it. Ah, thanks. Oh, it was, it, yeah. I tried to play it for him earlier and we couldn't get a goddamn signal. I'm like, you got to see oh. this thing that GJ. But so I, that went great. And then the very next episode, because I didn't see you long afterwards. 
I was like, dude, fucking congratulations. I saw you. And, they go, and you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm out the next episode. I, you know, I lost to a juggler. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Yeah. yeah and I was yeah. like, what? How? After that? I'm like, you were the, the one. And dude, I mean, I don't mean to bring so much of it, but watching your set last night, I hadn't heard you reference that. I heard all the other jokes, except the one you were like, I was an American's Got Talent. That was, what did you call it? Disability porn? <laughs> Fuck, that was funny. You're like, oh yeah, it's like the America's Got Talent. It's like the disability porn. They love their disability That's porn funny. or something. That was probably, that is one of the coolest things. Please tell me you've made that a hashtag now. I haven't made it a hashtag. <laughs> no, I haven't gone that route with it yet. It already yet. is an existing hashtag. Yeah, is I don't really? know if I really like, want to oh, send people down oh, that yeah. yeah, Yeah, see, I'm it very... It is the internet after yeah. I'm very thick in that regard. I'm like, yeah, dude, wait, it is? In oh, yes. Well. Yeah, but I just, I thought I thought it was funny because you are you are kind of speaking to that thing where it's like, they you're like, yeah, if you could cry a little bit too and make a sad story. Because Jason... You know Jason. You know Jason. Jason is is negative. He's like he's my friend, but he's negative. He's fucking bit, 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 angry at everyone, very aggressive. And I swear to God, Jason will spend all day Sunday in his bedroom watching America's Got Talent clips or fucking Yugoslavia's Got Talent clips and all these different ones. And he'll see like a little Japanese girl with no arms play a violin with his feet or with her feet, and he'll cry like a little bitch. And I'm like, how are you such an asshole to the people closest to you? And then just <laughs> she's playing Frere Jacques with her feet and you're crying. Oh, this is fucking inspiring. This is a nice little peek into the <laughs> secret life of Jason Lyons. <laughs> That's so great. I will use this information when I haggle with him for $50 extra at his club. No. Are you still, you're still in a position where you can come up to the club in terms of like, is it worth it to you to still come up? Or yeah, is it it's worth it. But I was supposed to be there actually like right around now. Oh, really? And then I had to cancel because I got a couple of NACA showcases, the college one. And Do you have I, to showcase again every year? If you get in. Yeah, you have to submit every year. And then I've been fortunate enough to get in the last few years. And then you go, if they choose from your video and you get in, you go showcase for the different regions. And then there's nationals every year too. But you can't go back to a region if you did it the year before. So for example, like I'm going to the Mid-America Showcase in Grand Rapids this weekend. Okay. So all the colleges from the Mid-America region of America, of, of the NACA kind of um, delineation. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Look at all the fucking delineation. I know. I couldn't think of a smaller say... word. <laughs> the way they slice up the territory. Flow? Organization? Organization. Grouping? Grouping. Listen, I'm your go-to for the the let's call it the, the McDonald's fries thesaurus. words. Yeah, no, those are all better words anyway. No, they're not. Yours was the good word. All yeah. right, you just you're taking out the fine but, line. But for that company. word delineation is like obviously it's not used enough to be helpful in any. There's no reason to use the word. So grouping, uh, organization, those are all better. All right, all right. They're not better. They're better, Josh. They're smaller. Yeah, more which, is, affordable. which is better. You can't Gravity live in Los is, Angeles and be throwing away frivolous large words. <laughs> all right, you can't have million dollar worlds when you're on a budget. That's all I'm saying. I'm yeah. sitting here and I'm trying not to people's expectations go up. You start talking like that. What right? were we talking about there? Oh yeah, so NACA Mid America. <laughs> if I did it last year, I wouldn't have been able to get back this year. I wouldn't even have been able to submit. Right. So that's the way it works. So when you you'll do see the a lot of the same comedians or entertainers at these NACAs, they kind of have favorites who get in often. You know what's funny is I didn't know that you did cruise ships. Did you get into that from the Conan stuff or? From uh, Homegrown that year, too. So Homegrown was like, people talk about Just for Laughs like it's not a thing anymore. Like people's careers don't start there anymore. It's just another credit. But from what, from your discussion, I mean, it, it was a big fucking game changer. It was a jumping off point for me, for sure. Yeah. For in terms of, I, I was able to make a living off comedy after, not right after Homegrown, but after Conan. Yeah. Um. So, which came from uh, Homegrown a few months after I was on. So, yeah, I mean, that was Homegrown actually kind of m made me like feel like a comedian in the yeah. sense of relying on comedy as income. And as you had like how many years since you've had a day job? Since Conan. So, that's uh, amazing. Five, December 2014. And did you get an agent? 
at Homegrown? Was that sort of when that started? Or uh, Not really, because it was Canada. I've heard of some people getting agents in America from Homegrown. Many. Okay. I'm pretty sure Graham K did. I think Pavone did my year. Alex Pavone, yeah. Yeah. But I didn't. But I got this cruise ship gig. And uh, what else? Some, so something you else a, came So you have an it. agent now. I do, yeah. In the States. Do you mind if I ask how that works? Because there's so many people in Canada don't have agents. And it's kind of like, you know, and then you just, the next thing you know, you're talking to a buddy who you came up with or whatever. And they're like, oh, yeah, my agent. It's like, okay, so how does that happen? Like, you you just, you decide or you're approached or what was your story? Um, if you don't mind my asking. No, I don't mind at all. Uh, I have a manager. Okay. And she hooked me up with an agent. Okay. So that's how it worked. And then we went and met, and he said, yeah, I'll, I'll take you on. Okay. So how did you get the manager then? She is also my college booking agent. Okay. And a couple of years ago, we both just decided just to work together in, in an all-around capacity plus colleges. So that one just kind of – and I had met her when I came down here like four years ago because um, I performed at Flappers, and she saw me there and just kind of like, one of those relationships where you just kind of, it keeps building, you know? So that, yeah, absolutely. That that Conan credit, that was like a, you were able to start messaging clubs and saying, hey, can I come down here? I was on Conan O'Brien. Yeah, Is but you know, honestly, like, I, I, so here, now that we're this deep into Yeah, it, sorry, it just, it's, uh, that's the part that fascinates me. It's like, yeah. it's like, you've got all these guys who are here and you start here. So I'm still at the point where I represent myself. I send my own emails. I, I talk to my own people. Yeah, for sure. But I got to tell you, too, like now that we're this deep into it and like, all, yeah, I have all these credits and an agent and a, a manager and like, yeah, these things are all cool, but it's still also like. Well, they're just business I won't aspects. Get, That's yeah, but like, but like I won't get a call back from a lot of clubs in America okay. because like I don't have enough credit to like sell out a A-list club in some right. areas. Right. So like all these credits are cool and, and I love that I. Uh, have an agent and a manager and all that too but it's always like well like what's the next thing like i want to fucking i want to like jump up even more so to just um go to your point of talking about the agent and the manager and everything the only thing i fear is that like i would hate to come off with like all this bravado where i'm like things are going great agent manager <laughs> like i gotta give the other i, context I don't look at it that way this is what i look at it as i look at it as I, one of the things that slowed me down and created my lull is mm -hmm. just, I can't, there's not enough time, hours in a day and there's not enough me to go around. If I'm doing my own graphic design for my posters and I'm doing my own social media and I'm doing all my emailing and I'm doing all my own writing and yeah. I'm doing all my travel, yeah, I can't do it all. Yeah. And at some point, like I don't look at it as, as the manager and the agent as being the bravado. I go, these are the partners behind me the business comedy yeah, whatever yeah. so for me it's almost like okay so you have a manager at what like how did that come across because at one point you were just a comic doing your own thing booking shows sure. by sending emails yeah so for me for me i look at those uh sorry we've been doing that uh, burr thing all day oh, every day for me the what yeah. thing uh, burr, burr on this podcast you know whenever he says for me oh for me like it's just <laughs> it's in my fucking language now i'm doing something that's published so it's just just so you know for I'm, me. I'm not trying to do it deliberately <laughs> we've just been in la around these people but the idea is as a comic you're doing it all yourself it's fascinating to me because i don't i don't wake up and, and know you know what today maybe i should try to find a manager you know, today I should try to find an agent. It's something happens that that makes that now essential, mm -hmm. right? So not as a as a as a brag, but more of a like, okay, you're outsourcing that part of the business. Mm -hmm. There's there's value to it. So for me, it was just sort of kind of like, how do I, you know, uh, or or how did you get to that point? So for you, it was your manager got you the agent, wicked, mm -hmm. and the manager was someone who saw you at Flappers. Yeah, my manager mm -hmm. owns Flappers. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. So how the fuck do we get on? <laughs> oh, <just kidding. laughs> well, I told you to call. You that gave me the number, number and, and I didn't. We've been driving around all day. It's and we were all doing good. Podcast. I'm, yeah, that's part but, of being a comic. You, it's very easy to do, and we just don't. Yeah. Uh, no, I know it's fine. I'll um, give her. A I'm call. there tonight if you want to pop by. Yeah. Yeah. What time are you there? Uh, fuck. I think eight. Eight o'clock. I think so. Yeah. I gotta okay. Look it up. And it's close to here, right? It's like five minutes drive away. Yeah. I could do that drive drunk. 
<laughs> Not I mean, that he has. has. Another credit. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Don't. I wouldn't condone that behavior at all. But the point I'm trying to make is I do often go into autopilot. I have made that drive from here to Flappers that often because yeah. they put me up. If, uh, if I'm in town and I didn't have anything else booked around town, they've been... They've been good to me. So that's how it works. Is I actually auditioned on a like Tuesday night. Um, this is kind of a funny story, actually. So the second time I visited LA, maybe third time, um, I hadn't done Conan yet, or I had just done it. But so I, I come to Flappers and do this like Tuesday night spot. I hadn't done Conan. I didn't really have much. And uh, the best set of the night on the Tuesday night wins what's called the pizza spot. So they get a free pizza and they get to come back I'm on the listening. Wednesday. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, they know their market. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the Daddy's Donuts, the pizza spot. Around. I'm moving to Burbank, baby. Yeah, yeah. it's been decided, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, uh, so the Wednesday night, I went back because I won the pizza spot and... Uh, they were like, we like you, we want the owner to see you. And uh, so I went back the next night, and she came and watched. And uh, I did a whole different set to try to show that I had a lot of... Versatility, yeah. But it wasn't as good as the night before. So they were like, why didn't you do the same thing as last night? And I was like, I wanted to show her that I got... And they're like, no, but the last set last night was killer. So I learned a very important lesson there. Just bring the heat. Yeah. Like last night at the store, that jo- those jokes at the end, I don't really want to do them too much anymore. No. But I'm like three minutes. But I got that. I saw the new stuff, and then I saw, and I'm like, I've heard these, but I but I understood. There was no part of me like, oh, like some people might hear, oh, he's still, yeah, he's great, but he's still doing old. No, I was like, yeah. Well, yeah. the cool thing is Flappers just tells me don't be afraid to do anything because they, they rep me, so it's all good. So that's where I go work out that. I'm just like, I'll do whatever the hell I want here, and and I have a great time doing it and I work on new stuff. I'm not just fucking around, but I'm like in the zone. So then I have no problem doing it. That's a showcase set. You got to bring the heat and show them you can make a room full of people laugh. Or... Your whole goal there is just to be as funny as possible. There's no other rule beyond yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so I learned a lesson there, but I got to know them. And then the next time I came back, they put me up again. And that's how. Uh... And um, then I started she was like, I think you'd be perfect for colleges. So I started submitting and I started getting in. So that kind of makes me valuable as a client. She's like, well, other people are wanting to book this guy in the most like clinical of terms. Right. She's like, there's money to be made from this guy right here. So that's why somebody would want to rep you. Right. They're like, how can I make money off? So it's, it's still like, like, like most things in the industry, it's still an organic process. It's not just one day you start calling managers offices. It's not like one day managers offices start calling you. It's maybe for some people, but I haven't found that in my experience. I've never heard that story. No, that's why I always ask, because like I say for myself, I know that one day I'm like, all right, I'm already, I've finally gotten to a point where I've decided I'm outsourcing a social media person. I know it's something I need to do. I'm awful at it. And rather than just continuing to be awful at it, I'm going to get someone else to do it. Oh, yeah? I'll, I'll work a little harder doing something that I know how to do so I can pay them to do it for me. Okay. So, yeah, she's just a local person, but she's great at uh, social media. And uh, and she's, I've, she's worked with Absolute in, uh, in Ottawa, and mm-hmm. she's really gotten a lot of attention and views and things like that. So I'm like, fuck, I talked to her. She's like, she already loves me as a comic. So I'm like, done. I want somebody who's representing something that they're passionate about, mm-hmm. right? Surround yourself with the right people. Cool. Yeah. Expensive or what? Not particularly. It's no? like a hundred, maybe two hundred a month. Not bad. So yeah, we'll chat and she's gonna rep she I send her the stuff, the graphic stuff, and it's just cool. Just but she's good at impressions every day and finding the right places to push your stuff to make sure. So rather than paying Facebook, hey, I got a poster, boom, and they're just like, What what number of what age and what places? She's like, Okay, no, I know what groups would be interested in that and I'll yeah. post on your behalf directly to the source and not just, you know, algorithms, but specific intent and and actually represent conversations back and forth when people are asking questions and, and whatnot. So hmm. like done. Cool. Yeah, I guess not a very good story. But uh <laughs> but I'm saying it's just it's the dabbling. Yeah, I just worry I don't worry, but you'd want to make sure she's kind of capturing your voice. Yeah, if- I don't have one. <laughs> I, I my voice is I don't want to put on pants and leave the house. Is I she going to tell the world that you don't want to put on your pants and leave the house? So that's, that's what I'm paying. That's what I'm paying her for. Yeah. Josh is miserable. 
I want to do a video and just send it to her and go, you make this funny. <laughs> now, now speaking of social media, what have you done on your side? Like, have you found that, like, I, I find, like, America's Got Talent and all these, like, cool shows that you've probably been on, Conan, tend to be things where people won't actually watch the show so much now, but now they're watching them on, on news feeds on their Facebook and yeah. so forth. Have you been sort of developing that presence? Have you been aware of that as far as trying to develop that presence in terms of, of your, your social media presence and platform? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can get a lot of people on social media, that can really help you just get into the live venues too because you can draw an audience. So it's very important, but I haven't quite mastered it. I'm trying to figure it out, but... I saw you having like sugar fits on the fucking carpet the other day after a Big Mac or something. just fucking dancing like crazy. <laughs> I'm like, is he okay? Really? <laughs> yeah, we, something about you having Big Mac thing and you were dancing or something. I didn't know what oh, the yeah. fuck was going on, but I'm like, just it's just your face thrashing and I'm like, <laughs> like something about Big Macs. And I'm like... Yeah, that was Mac Miller playing. Mac Miller passed oh, away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't but... have the audio on, so it was oh. just your face going crazy and something about Big Macs. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was, yeah, Mac. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess without the audio, that would look even weirder. I understand that now. It was weird in general. And when I do something like that, I want to delete it within 10 minutes. I'm why? Because like, ah, I'm just like, oh, but then I'm like, stop being a pussy. Who cares? Um, but that's why I'm bad at social media. I, uh, I am afraid of going full out in any direction because i don't i also don't want to like do or say too much because i'm like i like the idea of saying all my weirdest shit on stage and like kind of the idea of it being ephemeral and just being for the people in that moment hey siri what does ephemeral mean (laughs) did she tell you well she looks like she's trying to think i like dj with his big fucking words i'm sorry i do no i know what a lot of them mean it's funnier to pretend i'm stupid (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so here she goes she's plugged into the audio so she's gonna answer i can't it. play from big really she just said i can't play from big this is what it says play dj with big fucking words i do not know i don't know a lot <laughs> but it's really funny i'm stupid <laughs> oh, i'm damn. stupid i gotta Hold release Thanks, that track siri. so let's try this again let's try this again hey siri what does ephemeral mean as an adjective it means lasting for a very short time she spoke it into the recording so it says lasting for a very short time. <laughs> so everyone heard that. That's all. Okay. Great word. <laughs> and what did it say? Say it again. Uh, oh, it's gone now. It's lasting. It's gone. For lasting a lasting for a very sh- short time. Yes. Something yes. Ephemeral. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. fleeting. Yeah. Um, yeah. I like that idea of like in this moment, we're all going to get that. And then, but that's just an excuse too. So what I'm trying to think of in terms of maximizing social media is having something to say. So like coming up with a series or something. Cause the idea of just like showing people what's going on in my life is like, I, I get that it's important, but also I used to be so much more concerned with that where I, I was like, you'll, get a picture every once in a while but you don't need to know what i'm doing every day so now when i do show people what i'm doing every day i'm like well this is just what you have to do now but i'm like do i want to though i don't know if you have to either people i mean like that's what my podcast is for Mm -hmm. the people who want to know what's going on in my life i tell them there Mm -hmm. i don't know what i want social media to be because actually this week my social media while i've been very good at every I, i said to him everywhere we go we're gonna check in Mm-hmm. just getting used to that whole check in so people who people who want to know i don't necessarily care if yeah. people know if they want to know fine i want to i want to give them that information but at the same time i'm like i don't i don't care i've never been good at it because i don't think anything i ever do is interesting i don't know if you ever get that where you're like oh 100%. i should do this i'm like i don't i'm just at home what do you want from I'm me i'm having in and out burger yeah keep uh, that to yourself i well i've posted that twice this week yeah, uh, yeah. no i know <laughs> for me though i in live here <laughs> so i'm like the people don't need to know how much in and out i'm eating yeah well but isn't it fucking delicious it's dude it's amazing. great Let, okay well, i think the fries aren't that great i'm uh, just agreed. gonna say it agreed 100 but the burger is unbelievable well, burgers yeah. Are awesome. yeah let's put it this way so pinches i've been to three times i've posted twice we had in and out burger between scalero and coming here i did not post it the I'm one like, by burbank the burger one on burbank? sunset Sunset. oh nice yeah no it was it, but that's the thing i'm at the point where i'm like i don't now i don't need people knowing at first i'm like hey check out this american chain you can't get check out that american chain and i'm like i'm not a fat fuck i'm not telling you <laughs> i'm not telling i'm on you. a hike <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't do that 
But I, I think Daddy's uh, Donuts is going to get a little fucking check in Fuck from yeah. the big man. I'll come over with you. Yeah. If you guys yeah. want to well, go. We can get some social media pictures of uh, yeah, of us us at Daddy's da- Donuts. Daddy's Donuts. Daddy's donuts. <laughs> well, hashtag it Daddy's Donuts because it's oh, dad's, yeah. dad's Donuts, of course. But uh, Disability yeah. porn. D- <laughs> the biggest, the baby sized fucking apple fritter. Or baby weight. That's another thing I could do more with social media. Going back to that, is yeah. I could go harder into the hearing aids. But, I, there's a, but for real, be yeah. like, uh, like I like go harder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, uh, isn't this inspiring? Like, you can go that route, and I know it would be, but I just can't do that either. Like, not that I'm ashamed of them; they're always out there in the open, and I talk about them. But like, it's a decision I had to ask. Like, do I want to like go that direction? And it was a pretty easy decision that but you address that properly i yeah. think that you address that properly with the larry the cable guy thing and then you're like and then I'm a, so i'm the hearing aid guy i love that you i never like, say larry the cable guy but that's you don't? the name you ascribe to it yeah i just say oh uh, well then you, listen you knew what you were doing <laughs> well the person i actually was talking about i used to say their name when i did the set and then the i name? changed it it was uh russell peters Oh, okay. Ooh. You're allowed to do that. He's Canadian. We can we can make fun well, of him. Well, I'm not even insulting him. I'm saying that he opened my eyes to the fact that you can make $20 million off of something and did doing you say, it really did well. Did you say I'm the redneck guy or whatever? I, I, I say I'm, I'm the hearing aid guy. No, that's what you say about you. But what were you referencing at first? Because you talk about how there was this guy and you're like, why would did it? And then you found out how much he made and you're like, yeah. oh yeah, no, I'm the hearing aid guy. Yeah, uh, but I never called him anything, I don't think. I didn't say I'm the redneck guy or anything. Okay, was Larry the... So you're talking about Russ. I'm trying to think of who the... F- it was I, Russell Peters. Maybe I need to hear the joke again. Were you saying accents then? Just want to do accents or whatever all the time, then you find out what he made? You're like, oh, I'm the accent. Yeah, guy. I was reading an interview with him. Okay. And, and uh, he said people didn't want to hear any of his other material because he was so known for doing one thing. And then when he tried to switch it... Yeah. And then I said, oh... Uh, so when I heard that, I I was like, oh, I'm not going to do any jokes about my hearing aids. And then he went on to say that he made 20 million last year. Yeah. And so I'm I, the hearing aid guy. Yeah. When I heard that, I screamed so loud, my hearing aid broke. Because I wear a hearing aid. I have a hearing disability. I'm the hearing aid guy. I fuck. Yeah. You have to see this set, dude. It's so fucking funny. I'm talking to Mike, by the way. I struggled for a few years with how to address my hearing aid. It was kind of like a weird little Can big Can we get deal off of it, me. please? It's, I get it. <laughs> Get off what? Yeah, you didn't hear me? Yeah. Oh, you wear hearing aids. I'm sorry. It's funny, though. Sometimes when I like make a big deal of how I'm not going to talk about my hearing aids, and then I like start talking to the audience or something, and then I have to say pardon so many times in a row because like, I don't hear people. And like, like I Do they just... think you're being funny? Well, you know, I address it. Like, they, they know it's real. Oh, when you say pardon, they don't think you're just fucking with them because no, of... No, okay. no, it's very clear that it's real by how hard i'm craning my neck and struggling <laughs> to hear them but uh but it is what it is and um i made a decision to not go full out in that direction but i'm also kind of more open to just like be like check it here they are yeah as opposed to yeah well then that's the thing it's like everybody's gonna have that elephant in the room i can't go on stage and not do any fat jokes but I have like one, maybe two in my act. I can do 45 what do you, did minutes. Did you lead with it last night? Did you do any fat joke? I do. How I'm trying to lose. I go, I'm in LA and I'm not a pretty person that's in right. LA. Yeah, that's it's right. Yeah. Joke. You know what I mean? And then I just do the yoga, hot yoga joke. It's the same. I don't have to be fat for that joke. Mm-hmm. The joke is just how I'm, I'm trying to lose weight. So I started doing hot yoga. Or if I'm thin, I could just go. So I started doing hot yoga. It's the same fucking joke. Mm-hmm. But. The other joke, yeah, and, the other, and then I go into relationship stuff. I does nothing to do with my size. I talk about kids. Has nothing to do with my size. I talk about goofy little observations. Have nothing to do with my size. Yeah, but I can't do anything that seems the slightest bit critical or judgmental of anyone else or anything else. When everyone's like, "What about you, buddy?" Like in the back of their head, you know what I yeah. mean? You know how audiences are. Yeah. Like you can you can address things, but then you get to move on as long as you've addressed it. You don't have to make it your whole fucking set. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I I've always liked that about you. Like I said, the jokes are great, but your your set is not like, hey, by the way, you're not doing dick and porn and and my pussy jokes the whole time. <laughs> you haven't heard my new stuff, eh? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe tonight at Flappers. Yeah. Um, Hashtag but for real, you guys disability come porn. If you want it, if you don't. What's that? Hashtag disability porn. Hashtag <laughs> disability porn at hashtag daddy's donuts. Yeah. <laughs> hashtag cry more. Uh, yeah. <laughs> can you cry more? Fritter the size of a baby. 
what is it weighs weighs as much as a baby weight you just you just told this that would almost sound if you had a picture with holding a fritter and it just said hashtag baby weight you might have someone trying to say like are you trying to say that your donut fat is from baby weight yeah it's like no it weighs as much as a baby that's way worse <laughs> <laughs> Just a scale on, on one side, it's a fritter, and on the other, it's just a baby, and it's perfectly yeah. balanced. Oh my God! Can you imagine that picture? That giant fritter and a baby, and the question: Which would you rather have? <laughs> Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! This is fun, and I want to talk forever, but I really want Daddy's Donuts. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> dude. I I I can't tell you. Like, and we'll always have more stories. I would love to do this again if I'm if I'm in LA or you're up here. Of course, I'd love brother. to sit down and talk about all this stuff. I don't want to keep you too long. We're getting close to our. Our deadline, guys. DJ was very strict with me when I came in. He's like, yeah. "Listen, buddy, I'm happy to see you." You get in, you get out, all right? <laughs> yeah, you can't fuck around with my time, <laughs> um, dude. Uh, anything, any, any plugs or anything you want to plug? You have an album, which I did not know. Yeah, I got an album, uh, Indistinct Chatter. That's out everywhere. You can listen to music, Spotify, iTunes. You can also watch the video version of it. It's up on Vimeo through my website, DJDemers.com. The whole special is there. The whole special, yeah. Buck ninety nine uh. to rent. That's amazing. Yeah, or three ninety nine to buy. And uh, I also just filmed a new special for Crave TV in Canada. And that, I think, will be coming out in the spring. They sent me a cut of it. And I'm pumped for it to be released. Yeah, what's that I, one it turned called? out well. I'm, I'm excited. Sorry? What's, what's that one called? Uh, interpreted. DJ Demers Interpreted. interpreted. I have an interpreter on stage with me the whole time. That's hilarious. That's awesome. Go really? Yeah, an ASL interpreter to my left, my friend Jennifer, and it's funny. It's it's good. I think uh, I think the people will like it. I'm I'm very happy with it. I feel like a big jump from my first one to this one personally, and uh, I'm I'm hoping. Uh, I know it's going to be out on Crave TV, but they can also maybe sell it to other people. So I'm hoping. Um, when did you it, record that? Uh, just for last JFL forty two in Toronto. A few That's weeks right. Ago. Fuck, Very I'm stupid. Good. I even wished you well. I messaged you, you and you said, did. "Dude, I'm so excited. Have a yeah. great show tonight." Yeah. God, I'm dumb. Because uh, <laughs> we were both in Toronto, part of the the festival this year. What were you doing there again? I was just hosting the best of absolute shows. Or no, I. I oh. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Was, I was supposed to come for one night, but then the festival booked me for something, so yeah. almost ran into you either. know that old problem, right? <laughs> it's, wonderful. it's like I was going to go do five minutes for nothing, but, uh, but then, then I, I opened for uh, Matt Bron Bronger. Oh, really? Yeah. I'd never met him before. Nice guy. Oh, no, that's not true. I met him at the Montreal Festival a couple months earlier. Anyway. Uh, so the he, things I forget are like, oh, yeah, I sent you a message. He's like, oh, yeah, no, I forgot. I totally opened and met people at much more prestigious. <laughs> I'm just, I'm no, just but he's a balls. super nice guy. That's why I bring him up and really funny. Uh Right. You got that in the wrong order, and you know that. He's from Portland, right? <laughs> what do you mean? Super nice never comes before funny. I'm just that's joking. That's true. No, that's true. It's a bit of an anomaly in that sense. The, Maybe the, he's an asshole. The listeners he's definitely know, funny. The listeners would... <laughs> 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 no, the listeners know. Don't. That's, that's an old thing for comedy. I don't know if I've told them. Whenever you say a comic's name to another comic, if their answer is, oh, super nice guy. Like, you're like, oh, you know so-and-so? Oh, yeah, super nice guy. That is the worst thing that you can say <laughs> for a comic because if oh, you no. name if you name another comic, right? If I if if someone was like, "Hey, have you ever heard DJ Demers?" I'd be like, "Dude, that guy's fucking hilarious." Uh, like okay, it's the, the compliment on funny. being funny uh. always precedes the nice guy. If someone says, "Oh, nice guy," it's like, oh, "Yeah, but is he funny?" <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the, the kiss of death. It's where it's but like you gave them both. You just gave it in the wrong order. You're like, oh, super mm. nice guy and very funny. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. I'll reverse that next time. No disrespect. That's no okay. disrespect intended. Nobody listens to this. I'm joking. Um, dude, amazing as always. I can't. I cannot wait to see the specials, both of them, because they're both new to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, check them out. And um, sorry, well, do, I didn't mean to interrupt people... you. There. No, no, God. Do, do, do. I was just gonna say before you said bye. Uh, it was great seeing you. I'm glad I got to see you in LA, and great to meet you, Mikey. You. Yeah, dude. It's not gonna be so great to watch me annihilate donuts. That part you're gonna be like, dude. Oh, can we talk? Oh my God. I want you to make it long. I can't wait to, to see the look video. on your face no, when you hold this brown for sure. bag. We're making videos of that for sure. For sure. Yeah, we're gonna put oh, this. Yeah. yeah. So there you go, guys. Hey. Go back two weeks into my Instagram feed to see the pictures of all this stuff today. Um, as always, my great friend, DJ Demers, killing it, crushing it always. Uh, when are you running for president? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Not a citizen yet. Not, Not a citizen no, yet. you can't because you weren't born here. Oh, yeah, that's true. But Regardless, the rules I mean, are so in now. flux right now. Who's to say? Yeah. So you are still working on your green card? Not no, I got a green card. Ask. I'm just not a citizen. But we had a Kenyan as a president here. So No, he was born in Hawaii, apparently. The <laughs> arguments. Oh, maybe I just I, wanted to say I something horribly yeah. inflammatory <laughs> on the podcast. 
<laughs> Fair enough. Well, very cool, man. I, I like I said, I got a million more questions. We can we can do another podcast someday. Let's do it. Thanks so much for being a part of this, buddy. You are uh, a great comic, Mikey. Thank you for sitting in on this hey. as well and being a part of it on the trip. Thanks we'll for have... calling me a great comic and not a nice guy. Dude, you're fucking great super comic. sweetheart. <laughs> oh, great no. comic and a super sweetheart. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. See you guys.